Hey, Stephen, welcome to the show, brother. Ah, super excited to be here, Corey. You know, you've got a, a kind of a unique story. And, you know, when we were talking off, off air about, um, you know, the topic that we wanted to discuss today, uh, you come across one I think that I think is going to be real enjoyable for our audience. And really, um, it has a lot to do with what I believe, too, is, is mindset, right? And you call it the five uh, success principles. And I would love for you to open that up. But before we do that, though, this is my teaser. Give me your short, like, rags to riches. Give me your story in a, in a, in a, in a condensed version. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, super excited to be here um, because, you know, we've just built a great relationship over time. And that's one of the things that I love about real estate. It's why it's attracted me to this space is because it's full of people who really believe in growth, believe in, you know, creating a better life. And so I started my career in management consulting. I went that traditional path, got out of college, you know, thought that it was going to solve all of my money problems. And sure, I was making more money than I ever had in my whole life. And every time I took a new job, I doubled my salary and, you know, things were going great, but something was missing. And it was that passion, it was that freedom, and it was that ability to really live the life that I think most people who are interested in real estate are really attracted to. And so after uh, multiple different industries and experiences, I finally made my move into real estate and I actually started flipping houses. So, you know, growing up as a kid, I always wanted to be one of two things. I either wanted to be a chef like Emeril Lagasse or I wanted to renovate houses like Bob Vila. And I'll tell you all that HGTV finally paid off because after about two and a half years, we had flipped over 200 houses in two different cities in the country. Um, and it was phenomenal. We we're making great money. It was a good business, but to be honest, I was getting burnt out. And I realized that what I had done was I just traded one corporate job for, you know, a business that was just a job. It was, and it was all like about self-employed, right? Yeah, it was just all about these transactions. And I had the belief that I can build this team and that it can be totally hands off. And though, no matter how many uh, times that we went through these iterations, 15 people spending a million dollars a year on marketing, um, it's insane because at the end of the day, it's a business that still requires hustle. And it really does require people to be directly involved. You need the principles involved in that business. And it's possible there's plenty of people who are out there doing that business hands off, but it's rare. It's rare. And so I started looking around and started holding on to some rental properties. Um, you know, we had this pipeline. We're buying, you know, seven to 10 deals a month. And so things were going great. But I just kept hitting that wall where it's like, this is not scalable. I right. about oh, we gotta stop. I'm going to stop right there because I, I already know there's a lot of people listening. This this is this is touching you right now. Right. Because this is my same story, too, is that we all, a lot of us come from the single family world. That's where we started and then you're like oh, wait could you get to that point and you and you're really you're getting ready to hit it is that it's like i'm doing all this and in the world's eyes you look super successful steven mm -hmm. right freaking mm -hmm. killing it everybody would love to be in your position yet there's something missing because yeah. you're working like a slave you're just not telling anybody yet. <laughs> yeah right yeah and yeah. and that we all read that book uh, rich dad poor dad by robert kiyosaki mm -hmm. And that's not that's not what we were living, right? Mm -hmm. We weren't living cash flow. We were living a job, right? All right, continue, my friend. Well, in the cash flow quadrant, we were self-employed, so we were even more that it was even worse than a job. No vacations, no taking time off. I mean, yeah, you can go on vacation, and I did, and you know, I came back to experience the uh, the fallout that happens after that, and that's where I really realized, like, after being introduced to multifamily, seeing that it was something that I could do, and that truly it could have been a path I could have gone directly. I didn't need to go single family first, but you know, flipping two hundred houses and two and a half years and making some great money and having some good experience. I'm grateful for all of that. But that's when I realized like I'm buying an asset that is large enough for me to fly across the country and do my own due diligence. I'm still going to hire great people. I can afford all of these different great vendors that are experts in their area. And through that partnership, we can go buy these great properties. And so it took a little bit of time to wind down uh, that single family business and start moving into multifamily. But that's our focus today. You know, we buy properties in a couple different markets from Denver to Dallas to Jacksonville. And we're looking in some other areas in the Southeast. And it's a competitive market, but it's a much more fulfilling way to work in part because I'm working with my ideal client. I'm working with other successful people like you and me who are making great money. They're looking to invest and, you know, we're able to 
have aligned interests going out and buying these properties. And so it's, it's been a phenomenal transition. And in part of it, you know, this entire time is all come back to this idea of mindset. How can you get your thoughts and beliefs uh, in alignment so that you can actually move forward and do the things that you really need to do? Because uh, what I found was that there was always something that these successful people, they all had in common. And in, and that's what really led to these five success principles. But I learned that because I have a podcast called The Investor Mindset. You guys should check it out. If you enjoy this interview, you'll definitely enjoy that. Corey's been a, a guest and will definitely be one in the future. Um, but in that, we get to dive in and really start understanding how do successful people think. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, and, that's, and that is going to be the difference. That is usually the biggest separator between the number of commas and zeros in there is the way people think because your mind is a super freaking computer and most of us are not using it. We're not unlocking it and letting it use the potential. So let's jump in it, man. Let's hit it. Yeah. Well, first off, some definitions. Mindset, the way that I look at it is just your thoughts and beliefs and how those thoughts and beliefs directly lead to the actions you take and therefore the outcomes you experience. And therefore, by changing these thoughts and beliefs, you can change the action you take and start experiencing a different outcome. So why don't we look around, listen to some great podcasts, get some great mentors and coaches and go and find a better way of thinking because the strategy is super important, but a lot of people know what to do. They don't do it. Mindset isn't a silver bullet. It won't solve everything. But if you don't have the right way of thinking, then you definitely won't be able to apply any of these things. And so the first of these five success principles, one of the most important and universal is that the most successful people, they see challenges as opportunities. And so what does that really mean? It means that when they're dealing with some major problem in their business, in the real estate, uh, out in the world, they look to that and say, hey, well, how can this actually drive me forward? How can this be an opportunity? How can this be an advantage? And in the real estate space, in the space that you and I work in, Corey, is we look at these properties and we see all of these problems. Other people would say, I don't want to deal with those problems. But we say, what a great opportunity. That's how we're going to make some money. And that's how we're going to be able to add massive Thank amounts God of Thank God there's those problems, <laughs> right? Those problems yield fringe benefits like lots of cash flow and money. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Those problems are the reason why we're able to add value and make money because we're essentially buying a business and we're looking for, hey, well, where did that current owner leave something on the table and how can we pick that up and run with it? Yeah. And, you know, this is something too, so many times and, you know, hopefully most of the people that are listening to this are not this way, but the challenge is sometimes when people really start to get in, I think, you know, they hit their first obstacle. I remember I hurt my first obstacle, right? That was like 2005. This is like ages ago. I, I ran out of money. I was using my own money, right? This is mm. how, you know, way back in the dark days. And I hit that robot. I was like, I'm out of money and I don't, I can't, the bank won't lend me anymore, right? Because I quit my job. And I was like, I don't know what else to do. So I went back and got a job because I didn't know how to solve, you know, no money. Now, now it's all about private money, right? But I, I didn't have the mindset until probably about six, seven years later where I still didn't have any money, but my mindset changed saying, well, this is an opportunity because I've got to solve for X. I know I need money. What I didn't realize is I just didn't need my money, right? Yeah. So when people see these challenges, I think a lot of times the first one, they're already like, oh my God, this seems insurmountable. And how do you how do you attack those types of challenges? Yeah, it's it's where you recognize what is actually happening in the moment. You take a step back from the problem, from the frustration, from whatever it is that you're dealing with, and you look at it objectively as if you're not the one who's in it. And it's very difficult to do. But if you think about any time your friend or loved one comes to you and they have a problem, you're able to coach them on exactly what to do from a much better place than when you're the one who's in it. And so you can take that step back and you can essentially detach from the way that you wish that it was. You see it as it is, not worse than it is, not better than it is. And then you can actually make that assessment and you can say, hey, well, what's the lesson here? What can I learn? What yeah. positive lesson can I learn that's going to help me in the future? And how can I use this to motivate me? Right. Yeah. So like it, a, a great example, we were talking about this challenge that's happening in the market right now where people are putting 
massive amounts of money down. We just lost out on a deal, a million dollar hard, hard money. Uh, makes it something that we're not even going to participate in, right? So how can we deal with that challenge? Well, it, we can look at it and say, hey, well, the market is really hot and we could create a negative association and say, well, we're just going to stop. We're just not going to continue looking for deals. Or we could make a positive association and say, hey, well, in this case, we had an opportunity to make a move on that property sooner before it ever got to that other person. We need to focus even more on going out and getting those, those off-market properties and being more aggressive at getting those properties, not overpaying, not putting ourselves in a bad situation, but recognize that the market's in such a unique place that we need to take advantage of any time we have a first look and be the one to win out on those looks. And that's just one example. There's a lot of different things that you could take away from that situation, but those are going to come up and we just have to deal with them. Well, I like even the analogy you said, like, you know, you go ask your spouse sometimes, whatever. And a lot of times uh, for us in the business world, let's ask your mentor, ask Mm -hmm. your mentor. See, that's Mm -hmm. another piece that I don't think uh, mm-hmm. You know, we can get educated, but there's something golden about having the right people in your network that you can mm-hmm. bounce that because they are going to do what you just said is they're taking off the I'm in it goggles. They they got a whole set of other goggles that are just very abstract. And it's like, just tell me what you got. Tell me the symptoms and I'm going to prognose the solution. That's how and that's what good mentorship does. And to me, that's been the game changer, in my opinion. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. We've got definitely a lot to add on to that. It's, it's so important to have those people in your life because they end up giving you that visual to see what you can't see. You know, every great athlete has a coach. Every great business person has a mentor, someone they look up to. And even right now on this call, on this, this podcast that we're all listening to, this is an opportunity to be mentored right? This is digital mentorship. You happen to be receiving this mentorship for free. We live in a world where there's a lot available for free. What you don't get when you don't pay for it or you don't add value back to that other person is that you don't have the opportunity to be customized specifically to you. So this is a great way to get to know people, to get to know coaches and mentors and understand who these people are for you to then make that investment in yourself. So they'll make that investment back into you. Rock and roll, man. I couldn't, couldn't agree more. So what's, Beautiful. Se- let's, what's, what's our second one, man? Let's get into the second one. And, and this is an important one. We'll just touch on this ultra focused, right? The, the most successful people are ultra focused on one strategy, one strategy being one real estate strategy, one marketing strategy. That doesn't mean they're not doing other things, but they've got one direction that they're pointed and they continue to work in that, in that direction. And so one of the things you'll notice, I, I know you've experienced this. I definitely experienced it when I go to RIA events or real estate event, uh, or I'm talking with new investors who are up and coming and they're looking to get started and they have the old, well, what do you do? And the answer is, oh, well, I'm going to start flipping houses and then I'm going to do lease option and then I'm going to wholesale. And then I want to get into apartments after that. And then I'm thinking about doing storage and what I hear from that is you're not really doing anything and you're brand new to this and you haven't really picked a direction yet uh, because it's really hard to succeed going in all these different directions. And so the most it's successful almost people, impossible, right? Impossible it absolutely. Is probably a better word, <laughs> right? Improbable as well. You need an opportunity to create momentum in the direction that you, you want to go. And so, you might ask me, you might say, hey, Stephen, well, you know, there's lots of successful people who own multiple businesses. You own multiple businesses. Corey does. You know, lots of people are doing that. But anybody who is in that situation, they started with one specific area of focus. And then that is the hub that all of the spokes are then built off of. Corey does a lot of mentorship and coaching. He owns an apartment investing business. He owns other businesses. The apartments are the hub and everything else works off of it, bringing in other value. And so that's what the most successful people do. But they only do that once they've hit enough success, that they've got that momentum, that that business is going to continue moving forward while they focus on another area. So it's super important to be ultra focused. No, I I couldn't agree more. And that's I I do have seen that a lot, too. And again, going not to beat my fix and flip guys up, but if you're listening to that, it means you're, you want to you want to make the change, or you're thinking about the change. Is that was I see so many people. Oh, I'm flipping. I'm, you know, I'm. They've not committed, and you've got to get focused to be to have success. 
right? And until you do that, you're just going to be lukewarm and it's just never going, you're not going to get the success that you want or need. Yeah. yeah and I'm it. not against going out and, you know, flipping a house to make some cash flow to be able to fund your expenses while you're going to get your first deal. But the key is you need to be going in one direction. Apartments is your direction. That's the direction you're going. Any th this little side thing that you're spending five hours a week on so you can pay your bills, that's only with the intention of funding this. So when a new deal comes up that's going to take away time from doing your main thing, you say no to it, even though it might hurt because yeah. you know that it's going to give you that space to go out and do the thing that really does matter or matters most to you. Now that's a powerful word. No, N-O, two letters, one word, right? People don't use enough and they're afraid to use it truthfully. And even I'm, I'm very guilty of that, right? I look at my own life when we're saying, okay, you know, the power of focus. So this year uh, started at the beginning of January. We as a company said, uh, we are a, uh, an apartment building, you know, uh, company. We're, we're an apartment company. We do deals. We all, now, and, and now I also have a full blown education company, right? And we had to say what we are first because they were, we were starting to compete, right? Mm -hmm. What company is going to, is it going to be the info business that's going to win or is it, you know, me buying apartments and operating? And we had to make a choice and our choice was, we do apartments. Like I'm an investor first. And once we said that, it was allowed us to start saying no to things that we didn't want to like. So on the info business, you know, as this, it can drive you mad. Like it's a lot of work guys to produce this podcast that we're doing now takes a time commitment for reals. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's each and every week and it doesn't stop if you want to be good at it. Right. Mm -hmm. Now this is the one thing I love, but the other part of like, how many events do we do a year? Um, do we do a pre-sale event? Do we do another event? Like, and, and so we just started cutting and slashing all the stuff that didn't serve our core business and our core vision. And uh, I just bring that up because that's a real, like, that's something we just went through this year on having to refocus. Because sometimes as entrepreneurs, we go out and we, you get around a bunch of other entrepreneurs and everything's possible. But not everything's really needed. And so you get in, you create all these elaborate things. And sometimes you got to come back and self-reflect and say, what things, where am I, where am I focused? Just what you said, Stephen, what's my focus? So I can then start saying no to the things that are not getting me to my goal. It's, it's so critical. And that leads directly into the third of these five success principles, which you guys, if you're interested in diving deeper into these success principles, we put together a resource that summarizes some examples and gives you a little bit of something that you can actually run with and apply in your own life. You can just head over to investormindset.com slash success, investormindset.com slash success. And I'm sure Corey will include that in the show notes for us. Yep. And you can just grab a, a copy of the resource right there. Um, and, and download it immediately. But the third principle is actually getting clear on what it is that you want and why you want it. And so it starts first with getting clear on what you want. So creating uh, clear goals and a plan for how you're going to actually go and achieve those goals. It's so critically important because, okay, we want to be apartment investors. We want to grow this apartment business. We want to go close deals. Well, if that is our goal, it's going to be very different than if we we're going to go build a coaching business or if we're going to go flip a house. And so when we're clear on what it is that we want, we can really start to cut out the things that are not important. It makes that ability to be ultra focused that much simpler. And it's one of the biggest issues that I deal with, with uh, or that I help most of my clients deal with um, on the coaching side is a lot of people are really working from a place uh, of a lack of clarity. They're, they have this vision of, of a better life and there's so many different options and things that they could do to get there, but they're not really clear on what they want. And so a great example of this, when I built the, uh, the house flipping business, what did I want? I wanted to make money in real estate. I wanted to feel like I was successful making money in real estate. And I know a lot of you guys who have not done a deal can are feeling that exact same way. I'd never owned a house before I went and flipped 75 houses my first year. So I wanted to feel like I was successful and I wanted to make some money doing it. And so I was able to get to that goal. But the real goal was I wanted to create consistent passive income 
so that I could have the freedom and flexibility to choose when and how hard I want to work. Now, I may want to work super hard all the time because I love doing it. But what I ended up doing was I created a business that didn't serve that deeper what. And so it's really important for you guys to sit down What's and really why? work from yeah. a place of clarity to be able to help get you there. So there's a uh, thing is Joe Stumpf. This is old school stuff. This He does stuff for realtors. Uh, he calls it your five, six, seven. You like, you say, Hey, what do you, why do you, why do you want to do this? And you're like, Oh, it's because of X. And he's like, well, why is it, what is it about X that wants you to do it? And he's got to ask about three or four more, five more questions. That fifth and sixth or seventh question of why do you really want to do it? Peels back the layers till you get to the real core. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're just talking about. Steven is getting to the core of what you want. And I think if you were honest, it's, you know, most of us will start really saying it's not just money and success, but because there's a lot of different buckets, but there's that time component that once we really face it um, and realize that that's, that's a big piece of it as well, we want time and money, right? And in the right proportions to live a great life. And so, and that is part of what you just said is you've got to start focusing on what you want and then you got to put your business, you know, in the cracks in my, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Need core. Yeah. Yeah. Number three, uh, what you want. Number four, why you want it. And when you really focus on those five whys or those seven whys and you go deep, it starts to answer that question of what the real reason below the surface is. Now, for most people, if you keep asking why enough times they want security, they want happiness, they want, you know, to be able to know that the people in their life are experiencing both of those. Almost at the very core, everything kind of comes down to that type of a place. Yep. But up a couple levels is where you actually live. That's where you're actually living and experiencing. And so if you're going to build this business and it's going to take 40 or 60 hours a week, phenomenal. But is that going to be what you're going to be spending in that business forever? And is that going to match what you want? Or is this business going to match what you want? There's no right or wrong, but it's what's right for you. No, and, and I like that detail. I just pulled it back a couple of levels just because that that is the truth, right? That's what we're talking about is, hey, this little thing right here, even because that's the problem with a lot of us is we all of us, when you get into that true entrepreneurship and your mindset's pretty dialed in, you're like, everything's doable. I, I can put my mind about anything and get an extreme amount of success, but there's a cost to it, right? And that cost is X. It could be time. It could be resource. It could be money. could be focus. could be time away from the kids and family. And then you got to ask yourself, is it worth the price? Mm. And, and then, and then you start having those real discussions. I think that's, that's the part of what you're talking about. It just bringing it all together. Everything in your life has a cost. You're going to pay for it with time, money, emotion, relationships, whatever that might be. And you're making that decision every time you move forward with something. What am I going to pay for this result? And so as you start learning more about business and life, you start learning, well, hey, if I make this decision and pay for this, I'm going to have a better ROI, right? It's where Amen. we start getting away from 7 10 15 20 $50 an hour type tasks to $500,000 type hour type tasks. Right. But you have to start where you start out and you start learning that everything has a cost, right? And so you want to make sure you're moving forward from that right place. But super important, get clear on what you want and why you want it and build your business and life around it because everything else is going to be uh, you know, something that's going to fall along in those footsteps and you'll end up getting what you want if you work hard enough at it. Uh, but it would sure be a bummer if you end up completely changing the direction of your whole business because you realize that it wasn't truly in alignment. Amen. So we're at the final of the five success principles. And I actually believe this to be one of the most important ones because it's the piece that helps support you creating and living in alignment with all four of the rest of success principles. And we talked about it earlier and it comes down to all of the most successful people have phenomenal experience, mentors, coaches, and partners in their life. Right. And so there's a difference between a mentor and coach, and there's a difference between a partner. And so I'm going to kind of talk to you a little bit about the difference, but I, what is really important to understand is that these are people in your life who have been through it or can see how you can start operating at the highest level. They're that person to hold you accountable, to be a great person in your, in your network, 
to be able to help support you. And the difference between a mentor and a coach is a mentor is someone who's been down that path. They've been down it many times before. They can light the path ahead of you and you'll be able to navigate that much more effectively than trying to figure it out on your own. And a coach is someone who may not have been down that path. They may have, um, but the key for a coach is that they're able to help you see how to navigate that path and be able to point out and help support getting the most out of you. Because if you think about someone like Michael Jordan, for example, had seven different coaches at any given time during his career, you know, from health to uh, fitness to his shooting to the one that we all know about, Phil, his main coach of the team. And all of these people helped bring out the best in him. None of them would have been able to go play on the court in the same way that he did, but those coaches were there to help support. And so that is so important to have these people in your world because it's going to help cut the time that you spend trying to go down this path. And frankly, a lot of people will give up or fail or never even get started because they won't have the confidence to be able to start building the habits necessary to succeed. Don't you agree, Corey? Oh my God. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And great analogy with the whole Michael Jordan thing, because that is, tr that, that is true today. And I have coaches. I mean, I have, I, I have coaches and mentors, right? So both mm -hmm. different, different people, different aspects, just for the same reasons. Some people get, see, can help me with one thing, even though they've not, they're not on the exact journey that I am. Uh, my CPA, my CPA is like pivotal. He's not in the real estate like I am. He's a CPA, but he's able to look into my business sometimes and give me some coaching principles of like just business principles that mm -hmm. are freaking golden and sound and helps you build the right structures and, and really growth model for here's what you should be planning for. It's huge. It's, it's so important. I, I went out to uh, a two day one on one workshop with one of my coaches and consultants. And this person has tons of experience selling millions of dollars of product every single month. And I went out there spending 20 grand to go spend two days with this person. Absolutely incredible experience. Phenomenal. I learned so much. He helped pull so much out of me. And I ended up leaving with a different business. Than when I started, I literally came in to get support on one business and I left with a whole nother level of clarity, completely trashing what I had already spent six to eight months working on and started building something new because of that experience. I was able to cut all of that time. If I would have just started with him right from the beginning, I would have been in a totally different place. But the point being, yeah. it's so critical to invest in yourself because then these other people are interested in investing with you. And that's where partnership comes in, right? I think what I've found is that partnership is one of the most successful ways or the fastest ways to success in real estate. And partnership could be with a mentor or coach. Uh, it could be with great uh, people that you're paying a fee, might be alignment of interest, like in a syndication where you have great limited partners or passive investors who are investing with a sponsor and you guys are coming together. But all of these things are critical because at the end of the day, it's great people that you're surrounding yourself with who are experts in the space and they help you perform at your best level. That's exactly it, man. Well said, well said, right? Because that, that is the, the piece that needs, it's the glue, I guess, that puts it all in, and packages it all right. Right. Is, is those, those people, the coaches, uh, all of it, right? Uh, you know, they all play a significant role in, in your in your upbringing and what you want to do. And the more you can get more of those people, because it, it's not just one coach or one mentor. You want to get as many as you can on your team. I've heard people say this, and you've probably heard it as well. Be talking to somebody, and they're like, "Yeah, I'm not really looking for a coach. I got a coach like three years ago, and uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't end. It didn't end up working out for me." And I, I'm saying, okay, well, what did you learn from that experience? Well, I, I started, you know, I actually started flipping houses or I started in apartments and I kind of, I started doing some things. Well, what did you learn from that? Well, it, and then all of a sudden you, you hear it, you, it's almost like a click. They realize like, even though they didn't get the end result or outcome that they were looking for, they learned something. Yeah. And there's always an opportunity, even if you end up working with somebody and it ends up bringing you in a totally different direction, like the example I just said it's valuable. And it's yeah. not about one, it's about layering these people into your life so that you've got this support system that's going to really be able to bring you forward. Well, with education, the right education, the right mentorship comes confidence. 
confidence is uh, empowers your mind. When you have a powerful mind, you can start seeing through those obstacles as well, and you can start taking and have the courage really to start, uh, you know, plowing forward and achieving your dreams and, and goals and, and the success model that you're looking for. That's so true. So very true. Cool. Well, listen, uh, man, I, that, that, that's a great five success, uh, key principles. Um, uh, it's funny, but I, I do see it every day. Successful people have all those things in common. They really do. Right. And, and there's, it is, it is almost, hundred percent guaranteed. I, I can't say it's one hundred percent guaranteed, but it's pretty damn close. When I look at the my good friends that I know that are very, very successful, all of them have those attributes. All of them, mm -hmm. and they're not too proud of themselves, right? They're they're always a student, and a lot of times they teach what they know, right? I find that that's kind of to be a if you want to you want to kind of grow up in the world, um, you know, you should have kind of one hand up, you know, trying to attain knowledge, a student and one hand down teaching what you've learned. And that actually makes you a better student, in my opinion. So. Yeah, I agree. I agree completely. These, and it's such a great opportunity for us uh, to look around us and say, hey, well, who can we pull up with us? Who can we share these ideas, these concepts with? Who can we be an inspiration to? And then look around and look up to those people and remember that, hey, well, they were once where we were. And don't yeah. feel bashful about looking to work with them or add value to their world or to mentor with them or whatever it might be that, you know, they once were where you were yeah. and they also want to reach their hand down and pull you up. Now they don't want to do all the work for you. They want to give you some direction. They want to see you bust your butt to go out and do it. But there's lots of people out there that want other people to succeed. I know yeah. we both have that common core value and a lot of our friends do as well. Yeah. And I've always thought too, like, the more that I did it, practice, even when I didn't think I knew anything, but I knew, you know, I was just scratching all my, along my whole journey. Every time I, I learned something new, I'd share it, share it, share it. And sometimes when I learned something new, I wasn't actually great at it. But the more I shared it and tried to explain it, the better I became at it and eventually became an expert at it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you may not, you're going through it, you're fumbling through it and you're like, Ooh, uh, you know, and eventually it's the power of repetition. Then you get to like, I know this inside and out. And now I can explain it because I've kept practicing that I do know, I know it in my business and I own it. And in the beginning, you may not start there, but I think that's the practice drill and rehearse method that I've always, that's always worked for me is, uh, you know, sometimes you don't, you don't succeed at the first try. Don't give up. Don't quit. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. So definitely you guys, uh, ask yourself at the end of this episode, well, what did I learn today and how can I apply it in my life? And I definitely encourage you guys to go grab that resource, investormindset.com slash success. And, you know, shoot me a DM. Let me know what you learned from it. Let me know what that was like. You know, I, either me or someone from my team will get in touch. And I just think it's such a powerful way to make change in your life. And you might think to yourself, hey, Steven, all that stuff you just shared with me is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty basic. It's pretty common sense. But I, I challenge you because I, I know from my own personal experience, as well as all the people I work with, that most people aren't applying it. Even if you've, you've heard it before, ask yourself if you are applying it today uh, and, you know, go back through it a couple of times. And it's a continuous process. It's a never ending thing that you just keep doing. You'll be a surprise. Well, listen, OK, so, man, thanks again for sharing that wonderful information. I think everybody on the show really sees this as valuable information. And, and you know, I... I could do every episode this way. I, I could have this be the episode that we do every time. In my opinion, it's that important, right? These little principles of, of, of success in business. And it doesn't even have to be business because you can apply that to sports, to anybody that has a level of success, a Michael Jordan, a Kobe Bryant, any of them, they all have these exact same principles in their lives. It is the common thread of that successful people tend to always do. Um, with that said, uh, any books that you're reading right now that, uh, that have inspired you or helped, uh, you know, kind of, kind of game change you lately? Yeah. I mean, there's so many great books. I'm a real big fan of the go giver really powerful book. I reread that every year. Uh, Chris Voss never split the difference. I've had him on the podcast. You guys should listen to that episode, but one that's really been changing my world lately is a book by a guy named Michael Singer called the untethered soul. 
And he was a, a gentleman who had built a billion dollar software business when software was just getting started while living from these, this principle of, you know, really surrendering and letting go, like allowing detachment from the moment, detachment from that emotion that you're feeling. And many people think, well, hey, if you live with this spiritual mindset, you can't really be successful. Well, this guy lived from, you know, 21, built a billion dollar business that ended up becoming WebMD. And it's just so cool seeing something that I think could really unleash so much in people's lives because people end up in business and personal life. They get caught up in the emotions. It ends up stopping them from taking action. It ends up breaking up their marriages, so many different places. And to me, it was one of those moments where you read a book and you're like, wow, I get it. Like yeah. it's, it's so simple, but it's so hard. Yeah. But it's, I've not it's read that, that one, simple. but I'm, I'm going to actually, I'm going to go get it. That's, that's, that sounds really interesting. I like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Cool. So if you could give anybody uh, on this podcast, some piece of advice from your heart, what, what would you say to them? Yeah. The, the biggest advice that I would have is set big goals, set big dreams, and then be patient to let them happen as a driven driver, someone who's going out there and doing big things in the world, it can be really easy to get caught up in wanting it all to happen right now. And you want to have that drive. You want to take action and make things happen. But you also, you know, like we're talking about here, you need to let things happen as well. And so the, the biggest advice is, you know, get clear on what you want and then really enjoy the process of getting there, you know, because it really can be a lot of fun. The journey is the reward, my friend. Listen, thanks again for coming to uh, the podcast. Uh, go ahead and get, how do they people get a hold of you again? So put that yeah, absolutely. Well, I definitely encourage you guys to go listen to the Investor Mindset Podcast, top investing podcast out there. And uh, you can find me on any of the social medias, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, shoot me a DM. Let me know that you listen to this episode and uh, me or someone from my team will share something really valuable with you. And it, it was a pleasure getting to serve you guys here today. Rock and roll, man. Listen, guys, uh, what a great principle to start to start this week on. Um, you know, I can't tell you how much in, 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 every show we do it this way every time we end it on mindset because it is such a thing of value and most people are wasting it. It's what's in between those two ears. It's vitally important. What you think, what you believe is really the biggest differentiator, in my opinion, of successful people and not, along with these key principles that successful people, successful people have. Um, but guys, you gotta believe it, right? If you believe it, you can achieve it and your paradise is possible.